Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Drew back again with yet another video for all you soccer fans out there. And in this one, of course, we're going to talk about the 7 0 win the USA had against Cuba last night. And while this game on paper looks really cool and like exciting and great news for USA soccer, uh, there's a lot more behind that. So in this video, we're going to cover that, review the game, give you guys the positives and then all the negatives that came with it. So kick back, relax. Let's talk about it. This game, first of all, I didn't watch it. And if you guys watched it, congrats. I'm sure you guys love to watch all the goals being scored, okay? Um, <laughs> for the most part, um, I'm still feeling the same way I felt before this game about the, na the national team, okay? Before I get into the negatives, let's talk about the positives that came out of this game. Let's start off with the lineup. Um, Josh Sargent got the start over Trashy Zardes. Um, I was, you know, with Josie Outdoor's injury, everyone was kind of thinking, great, that means Zardes is going to be starting up front ahead of Sargent. And I was surprised by Greg Berhalter, for once. He actually went ahead and started Josh Sargent, which I'm sure was due to, you know, fan pushback and, you know, the media and everything um, about Zardes and stuff. So he's probably like, you know what, for this game, I'll probably just bench Zardes. Don't worry, buddy. Um, we can, we can, you can start the next game. Anyway, Josh Sargent started the game. Beautiful. Um... What was the other positive again? Oh, yeah. The scoreline. 7-0. I know it's not that big of a deal because it's Cuba, but for most American soccer or most for most American, American sports fans, to see that scoreline gets them excited about the national team, gets them excited about the sport, that's that's always a good positive because people, American people want to see a high scoreline and USA delivered. Beautiful. Uh, another positive. Josh Sargent and Kristen Pulisic both got goals in this game. That's going to help Josh Sargent's confidence and motivation to work harder in this national team, hopefully help Greg Brother see that he's the best striker we have right now available, and especially for the future. Um, and of course, Kristen Pulisic coming off like some terrible experiences right now at Chelsea, coming into this game scoring a goal. It was a penalty, but still he got on the team, he got on the score sheet. It's gonna help his confidence and boost his boost his momentum for him, hopefully, for both of those players. The last positive, <laughs> um, Will Trap was not playing. That's really good too, but that's not the last positive. The last positive is Wes McKinney getting a hat trick. Um, in my last video, when I when I was talking about um, you know the whole squad list that we had for this this game, these two games, I was talking about how Wes McKinney he's a big prospect for us, but he hasn't really imp imp impressed me really at all with the national team. But I guess last night he really did with the hat trick. I was kind of surprised of all people getting a hat trick is Wes McKinney. So I guess that goes to show that he is a, a, a you know a midfielder who can sit back. Cut some passing lanes, but also go forward and score some goals and create more chances. So, that's a good positive. Now, <laughs> let's talk about all the negatives. First of all, this is going to be a really short video because there's not much to talk about in this game. But for the negatives, number one, it's Cuba. Nobody get too excited. We won 7-0. Boo, boo, hee, ha, ha. We had a good time. But it's just fucking Cuba. If we didn't win this by this margin against Cuba, then there's something really, even really more wrong with this national team, okay? It's just Cuba. No offense to them, but they don't have a strong national team. That's fine. You know, most of the good athletes are not playing soccer, and that's okay. That's kind of goes the same for us. But it's just Cuba. Don't get too high. I don't want people in the media to be like, oh, my God, USA is back. They won 7-0. They're, they're doing so good. Greg Brothers is the best coach in the world. No, it's just fucking Cuba, dude. Like, relax. Everyone, all the American soccer fans getting excited are thinking positively, positively about this. I want you guys to sit down. Really realize, analyze this, like, okay, it's just Cuba. Can we really do it against someone like Mexico, Costa Rica? No way. <laughs> the next positive, we had fucking Brad Guzan in goal. Brad Gu okay, I have nothing really against Brad Guzan, but like I've said in countless videos, he's not my number one pick, and he shouldn't be number one pick for Greg Walter either, and he's not ever been the best goalkeeper we've ever had. You know, he's always behind Tim Howard, and right now he's behind Zach Seven, or he should be. But for some reason, he started this game, and I really, I don't know why. Maybe it's Greg Walter wanting him to give him some playing time because it was just against Cuba, not a big, you know, not a big, a big game or not a big game uh, to risk points or whatever. And that's why he probably started Guzan. But I was kind of shocked. I was like, dude, like if you're really working towards the future of this national team for the World Cup, do you think Brad Guzan's going to be in the World Cup uh, when it comes around in two years? I don't really don't. I really don't think so. But we know who else is going to be around. Maybe players like Sean Johnson, Zach Steffen, um, any, anybody else, a better keeper. Who else is there? The Jurgen Klinsmann's son, perhaps. We got Ethan Horvath. Come on, we got lots of young players out there who could definitely make it 
in the World Cup next year. Even if you don't, even if they're not starting, they could be on the bench or the third choice goalkeeper. Even even still, it's good to have young goalkeepers coming up to the ranks to back up Zach Steffen right now. Um, and, and Brad Guzan's not one of those players, so I was kind of annoyed of that. Um, maybe it's just me. I'm sure you, or I'm sure you Atlanta United fans like seeing Brad Guzan out there, but for your boy Drew, I didn't care. Um, another another negative here is uh, just the, the team sheet, bro. Daniel Lovitz on left back. Okay, I get it. It's Virginia Dest. They don't want to play. Trash. I, I don't, not a big fan of Lovitz. Not a big fan. Um, you know, Tim Ream is pretty decent in, as a center back, but I wish we had given chances to more younger players. Like, this is what I'm complaining about. I'm just complaining about giving more young players a better chance at this national team. I don't understand, Greg Berhalter. I mean, look, we have players like Miles Robinson on the bench who could have started ahead of possibly Tim Ream. And maybe, no, you know, possibly ahead of Daniel Lovitz, put Tim Rima as left back where he plays for the most part of his career as left back player. And then put Miles Robinson alongside Matt Miazga in the center of defense. That way you give Miles Robinson some more competitive games to play with, get more comfortable because he's a good prospect player coming up through Atlanta for the national team. We could use him. He's a great player. He's pacey, strong. He's smart with his head. You know, come on. This guy doesn't fucking think, bro. He does not think. The next game we have here is against Canada. And Canada is not a pushover. At least they're not. They shouldn't be anymore. You know they have some good players coming up through the ranks as well. Another team coming up with good young players. Another team really kind of in a rebuilding process. Uh, another team who's really looking looking like they're kind of starting to find their way. Um, so don't expect to win seven 0 against Canada. And if I'm wrong, you guys can come back here and hate on me. But for the most part, I think it's gonna be a closer game. I'm gonna go ahead and say just two 0 win against Canada. I mean, I still think we should be able to beat Canada. How about just 2-1? That's that's even closer. That sounds better. 2-1 win against Canada. And I think that's how it's going to finish. You know, I I don't see this national team improving. Like, they haven't improved at all. I really don't... I don't know. I keep... I feel like that's like a broken record. This national team is below average. I'll say it. Okay, we've got some class players. Zach Steffen, Christian Pulisic, Josh Sargent, uh, Tyler Adams, who's still injured right now. But for the most part, everyone else is just... An average player. No one's here is world class. No one's here is lighting it up, impressing me like crazy. Um, and right for that reason, we're gonna lose a player like Jorginho Dest to the Netherlands because um, the Netherlands national team probably probably has a bigger future ahead of itself, more, or maybe an even more successful future than the USA. So that sucks. That's it though. I know this this video was really short, but there's not much to say about this game. You know, I didn't really want to watch it. I'm sure some of you guys didn't watch it as well. Uh, some of you guys did say you weren't gonna watch these two games because they're meaningless or because the lineups gonna be trash. And I agree. That's why I didn't watch. I didn't. I didn't say time take time to, out of my day to watch this stupid game because I knew we were gonna win. I knew people were gonna overhype this game after we won it. And whatever. Greg Berhalter is still trash. Zard is still trash. Will Trap is still trash. This national team is still. Trash, and it needs saving. Maybe Jill Ellis can come and save it. Nope. Different topic for a different video. We'll, we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below on this game. Did you guys like it? Did you watch it? And do you think we should get overhyped about this scoreline right now against Cuba? Let me know down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for kicking it with me. And I'll see you next time. Peace.